Welcome to the Private Practice Startup Podcast, where we help mental health professionals grow their dream practices and live a life they love. We chat with successful private practitioners, business coaches, and marketing experts, bringing you tons of practice building tips. We invite you to take advantage of our private practice paperwork and our signature marketing e-course. And we have a gift for you. This is the exact methodology we use to create our six-figure private pay practices and have helped many other therapists do the same. Go to privatepracticestartup.com and on the home page, click the button to download a free copy of your dream private practice playbook. Now on to today's episode. Hey, everybody. Welcome back, Startup Nation. It's so good to be here with you for another podcast episode. Today, Susan Block and I are going to be co-hosting. Hi, Susan. Hey, Kate. How are you? I'm good, thanks. Nice to have you back with us here today. Well, it's nice to be invited back as the fill-in for Katie, although no one can take her place, but I'm happy to be here. (laughs) Yes. So Susan is actually one of our amazing private practice coaches on our team here, and it's going to be a fun episode today as we introduce you to one of our e-course and coaching alumni and uh, we have Rayshawn Ledette here. He's an LCSW based out of New Jersey who actually has an online practice. So we're going to hear from Rayshawn today. Hi, Ray. Hey, hey, how's it going? Hey, welcome. Thank you. Welcome, thank you. Ray. It's so great to have you, you know, uh, on the podcast today and uh, just kind of catching up with you. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and before we jump into it, Um, Susan, you might remember this. I have an icebreaker question for uh, you guys (laughs) and the listeners as well to see how well do you know yourself. Okay. (laughs) I like it. Yeah, you're flipping the script here on us, right? (laughs) Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, All right. You guys ready? We're We're, ready. We're ready. Give it to us, right? (laughs) Okay. And it's for you guys and the listeners as well. What is your second, not your first, what is your second favorite food? Oh my goodness. Oh, this is right up Kate's wheelhouse. Both of us actually. But I know Kate's the big foodie here. So I'm gonna let you answer first. <laughs> I I I know. I have to think about my first, then I'm like, gosh, what is my second? Okay, I think I would say Italian. I love pasta, like mm. fresh homemade pasta. I don't make homemade pasta myself, but if I can find like an authentic Italian restaurant that has great fresh homemade pasta, I love, love, love that. Susan, what about you? Okay, so this is probably a new one for me, but so Asian food has always been my my top favorite, and I just experienced uh, authentic Thai food, and I don't know, it's kind of neck and neck with uh, with my first. So, but I'll, I'll say that that's my my second favorite is authentic Thai, and I found a great new restaurant locally. Mm. Oh man, going through those food phases where you find just that, where it's like, where you've been all my life. <laughs> and you just got to go through that cycle. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yes. So, what about so you, Ray? Great question. Uh, pizza. Pizza takes the, the second spot for me. Pizza all the mm. way. I, okay. I, I think that, you know, that's just kind of a staple. Yep. <laughs> now that everybody's listening to us and their stomachs are growling because they're hungry. Exactly. Hopefully now they're hungry to learn more about private practice. Exactly. Right. <laughs> yeah. So we want to welcome you back if you're a loyal listener. And if you're brand new to Startup Nation, welcome to you too. We've got a gift for you. As a therapist in private practice, you definitely need to assure that your paperwork is up to par with all of the legal and ethical requirements. And as of January in 2022, here we are now in May of 2022 as this uh, is recording. Um, As you all know, there's a new regulation for medical professionals. Yes, therapists, we're included. And that's with the No Surprises Act. But no worries, we've got you covered. We're giving you our good faith estimate bundle for free. So head on over to our website and you'll see the link to download that under our resources tab. And before we dive in to speak with Rayshawn today, we want to take a quick break to hear from our sponsor. Is managing your practice stressing you out? Then try Therapy Notes. It makes notes, billing, scheduling, and telehealth a whole lot easier. Check it out and you will quickly see why Therapy Notes is the highest rated EHR on trustpilot.com. With over 1,200 verified customer reviews and an average customer rating of 4.9 out of 5 stars, you'll notice the difference from the first day you sign up for their free trial. They offer live phone support seven days a week, so when you have questions, you can quickly 
quickly reach someone who can help. And you're never wasting your time looking for answers. If you're coming from another EHR, they make that transition really easy. Therapy Notes will import your client's demographic data free of charge during your trial. So you can get going right away. Use the promo code PPS as in private practice startup. That's PPS to get two free months to try out Therapy Notes for free with no strings attached. And remember, telehealth is included with every subscription absolutely free. Make 2022 the best year yet with Therapy Notes. And if you haven't listened to last week's episode, you'll definitely want to check that out. Katie and I talked with Josh Keller about three things to do when clients trigger your own stuff. We have all been in that experience before, and it was a really interesting, thought-provoking conversation. So you'll definitely want to check that out. And again, today, welcome to Rishan Ledet. He's an LCSW based out of New Jersey with a completely online telehealth private practice and owner of Mental in Mind. So welcome, Ray. It's great to have you here. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Glad to be here. Um, Shout out to Katie. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, Katie is actually vacationing in Yellowstone. As we speak, she's been sharing all her pictures of the beautiful landscape and the buffaloes and wildlife that she's seeing. So she's on an epic adventure and uh, definitely with us in spirit. So Ray, let's talk a little bit about your journey. How did you become a therapist in the first place? Okay. Um, so how did I become a therapist? It kind of brings me back to um, going into undergrad where I didn't really know what I wanted to be at all. Like no real, real clue of what I wanted to do. I had some interest, but not really sure. And my mom is actually a social worker and she was saying like, Hey, like she was giving me some of the details about it and say, I think that this is something that you would enjoy. And, you know, I got into social work. Um, I went to I actually went to Essex Community College for a bit, transferred over to uh, Rutgers University, both for my undergraduate and master's. And I really didn't fall in, fall in love with, you know, what I like to call the art of therapy until my internship in the master's program. That's when I really started to kind of get into it and say, like, ah, I was made to do this. What was it about the program that kind of like clicked for you? Figuring people out so that, you know, we can help them where the social work principle is, you know, meet the client where they're at. You can't force anyone to do anything. You want to meet them where they're at. And I like that where I'm not, you know, uh, fixing people or giving them the answers. I'm more so, as they say, you know, teaching them how to fish so that, you know, they'll never go hungry. We're enabling them and empowering them with the skills so that they can help manage their situation and make that everlasting change. And I rock with that. Yeah, that kind of like gives me chills. It's like you had like that moment where you're like, okay, now it's all making sense. And it was really in alignment for you at that moment. Mm -hmm. And I'm sorry. Oh, no, it's okay. I I just was about to ask a question, but I didn't want to interrupt you. Go ahead with your thought first, Ray. Uh, I was just going to say that. uh, And I'm also a competitive person where I just want to get better, where uh, whether it's competing with other people or even myself, like I just want to get better and better and better. So just being able to, you know, help the clients more effectively and efficiently as possible. Like I, this is my lane. Nice. Yeah. And you talked a little bit in, in, and we have a little uh, information on you. So you used to play video games competitively. So I guess that's like that competitive streak in you. Mm-hmm. I, uh, um, I used to play, the main game was a uh, Super Smash Brothers, and they would come out with a sequel to that and everything. And the current one is on the Nintendo Switch, and I will play that competitively. Took a step back from it where, you know, decided to go the therapist route. I'm happy with the route I, I went with. <laughs> but I actually have a friend that's, uh, um, he's active currently. He's top 30 in the world at uh, Super Smash Brothers. So shout out to him. Wow, interesting. <laughs> yeah. And you mentioned earlier, Ray, that your mom was a social worker. So you grew up kind of in the field, being introduced to the field at a, at a very young age. What was that like growing up with your mom as a social worker and kind of following in, in that footsteps? I lived between um, my grandparents and my mom at different stages. And a lot of what I saw was a lot of what people needed at the time and didn't necessarily have it for reasons. And the an acronym I came up for myself last year was GUI, G-U-I where I want to give people guidance, understanding, and insight, some form of guidance, understanding, insight, 
And right now at this stage in my life, I'm doing it through therapy. And I imagine as, you know, things continue to go on, you know, we evolve over time, um, giving some form of guidance, understanding, insight in whatever I'm doing. Um, so just kind of just going through all those experiences, I just saw a lot of what, you know, what people could benefit from that they didn't necessarily have. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like that kind of keeps you on track for life, no matter what direction you're going in, that that's Mm -hmm. kind of your, your standard that you follow. Absolutely. So in your journey, your therapist journey, um, tell us a little bit about how you got into private practice and the timeline of things, how long you've been in practice and uh, what your experience has been thus far in private practice as an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. Um, So mental and mind birthday is uh, March 10th, 2021. And at the time I was working at a outpatient facility. That's where uh, the majority of my clinical training came from. I did my internship there. Really great experience. Shout out to my, uh, clinical supervisor at the time and my friend, Peter McCleary, like he's, he's a really good therapist. Like he's, he's just really good. Um, and at the time I just had my private practice on the side. I kind of knew I was already always going to go into private practice, but it was just on the side. I'm talking about, I had a psychology today profile, no logo. Like it was just on the side. Yeah. They, <laughs> if people found me, they found me, they did it, you know, it's cool too. And, um, The most clients I had at the time was four. And again, this is all on the side, everything, still doing my main nine to five. And then in December, uh, excuse me, in September of 2021, I felt like I've reached max benefit from the outpatient facility. And you know, with clients, when you talk about max benefit, you kind of got all that they can out of the services, the program. And that's how I was feeling as an employee. Again, I was there for almost five years, did my internship there, and I was just ready. I just wanted to try something else. So I actually went from not, I didn't jump full into private practice yet. I actually went to work as a 1099 worker in a residential facility. And I learned a a lot about myself of not only what I wanted, but what I didn't want, how I want to provide and offer my services. And I thought to myself, like, you know, I have this private practice. I always did have the thought of eventually going into private practice, like really going into it, not just doing it on the side. And I just kind of had that moment of like, why not? Like, if, if, if I'm going to bet on anyone, it's definitely going to be myself. So I'm like, why not? I can do this. And anything I don't know, I'll figure it out. What I'm kind of taking away from your story is that working in whether it's residential facility or doing agency work is that you really developed into the therapist that you wanted to be, that you, and I know a little bit about you because, you know, uh, through our coaching is that you're, you're a learner by nature, you're a sponge and you kind of soak everything in and you just really were taking in, you know, the, the mentors that were doing it, you know, uh, steps ahead of you. And um, that was really the foundation for you clinically and wanting to take your experience uh, into your own work and develop your own skill set. So that's kind of what I'm taking away from, from your journey. No, absolutely. I am, I am very coachable. I'm very humble in that regard, where it's like, hey, like, I still remember my first day as an intern in that, uh, the outpatient facility, uh, one of the therapists there is like, it's okay if you don't know everything you're going to learn. And I was like, whew, way ahead of y'all because I don't know nothing. Like, <laughs> teach me. <laughs> what a relief, right? <laughs> <laughs> right on track. But, um, but yeah, like I just, I just want to continue to grow. So you've actually just had your one year anniversary in private practice and you're all virtual. So you've got a you got an online practice and are you full-time private practice now, Ray? Mm-hmm. Full-time. So full-time. I, Congrats. Thank you. I appreciate it. What was it like making the leap into full-time private practice from kind of straddling the two? Mm-hmm. Um, I was doing it on the side since March. So all the money that 
uh, I was making from the private practice, just having anywhere from one to four clients at the time throughout the, throughout the months that was just going to my business bank account. And that kind of gave me a bit of a cushion so that I could utilize that money, especially the ones that count as a tax write off and uh, use them to invest into things such as the private practice startup course and the coaching and everything. Um, and that made the transition, um, a lot less, uh, stressful, more manageable. So I just want (laughs) to shout out to you guys because uh, it's just a really good course for a number of reasons, but that made the process a a lot smoother, a lot more manageable and gave it, gave me a sense of direction because without that, it's like, how do you inherently know how to start a private practice, Mm -hmm. right? You got to figure it out. You got to go through the steps. And this, this was a good system for that. Gosh, there's so much I want to say. And I know, Kate, you want to also, I, one thing that kind of just stands out for me is like, and, and I think this is important for the listeners, is that when you were, you know, doing both, you know, the, the full-time job and private practice, what you did was you saved, you you took the extra income, you put it in your business savings account, and that way it was less scary and less risky to take that leap. And I think, and, and I went through that. I was a school teacher and, and taught full time and was doing the private practice, you know, part time. And I was like, all right, how will I know when it's the right time to make the move? And I looked at the numbers, I looked at the bank account. I thought, you know, God forbid there was ever like a catastrophe and I wasn't able to see clients. I'm still good because I, I planned ahead of time financially. And it sounds like that really worked well for you as well. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I love to hear how you go all in, like you, you go all in on yourself and you were so smart about strategizing and, and saving up so that you could invest in yourself and invest in your business so that you could really have that successful thriving practice. And it's, uh, I, I love hearing, I love hearing that and that it's been a great experience with the marketing e-course and then also the coaching aspect and working with Susan specifically So Ray, tell us a little bit about your niche and who lights you up that you absolutely love to work with your ideal client, (laughs) my ideal client. Um, I really like working with men. Um, I noticed that, you know, throughout the years, even before being a therapist and everything, men not really having that space to kind of (sighs) express some of these emotions, some of these thoughts that kind of go on in our mind and, really being able to kind of give them someone like a a, a man in that space who within my age range, my demographics, everything, when I get on these consultation calls, you know, one of the main things I hear is, oh, it's, um, it's good talking to a guy. It's good talking to, you know, a black male therapist. It's good. And I even branched out to working with teenagers because I would get a lot of calls from moms, dads, right. And they're saying like, Hey, I'm looking for someone for my son. Da, 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 da. And I just thought like, why not me? I don't know if anyone else, like the listeners, anyone, you guys like have um, like those thoughts that just kind of come to the forefront of your mind every so often. They're not bad thoughts. It's just like thoughts that just pop up. And I think about Derrick Rose. He's a, a basketball player still in the league, but when he was on the Chicago Bulls, really good, a lot of talent. And he has this one interview where they were talking about MVP for the league that year. And he said, why not me? Like, I get it. Like, this person's talented, that person's talented. And they were saying, like, what do you think about your chances and, and everything? He was just like, ah, why not me? Like, I got what it takes. Like, I, I, I can do it. And he did it. So why not me? Yeah, believing in yourself. And that's a lot of the mindset work. That's half the battle in business is being able to conquer those those thoughts, those um, beliefs, those you know, there's so many different factors that contribute that kind of like sneak in. It can be that little voice that pops in on your shoulder and, you know, why me? Why not you? I, I, I love that. I love that you're able to challenge that. What have, have you, been, oh, sorry. Oh, I was just going to say like, just really quickly, like how did, was that something you've always had that confidence or how did you attain, like, what did you have to do to get confident in that way? Honestly, like, I know when in the midst of like the pandemic and everything was going on, like it was just, it was just a lot going on in life. Like think of like a pie chart where there's different 
you know, sections in your life, like your, your, your family life, your social life, it is like all these different areas. And it just felt like a lot. And then going into 2021, the end of 2020, um, going into 2021, I said to myself, like, I'm gonna continue to grow. Like I, like th- there just is no turning back. Like I'm gonna just continue to grow all aspects of my life. And again, I'm just betting on myself. Like I always had a sense of confidence about myself. Um, but it was more so executing on that potential because I believe a lot of people have potential. I believe a lot of people have things that they're really talented and and good at and everything, but it's more so getting yourself to execute and act on, you know, what you're great at. And I, I, I was just, I was just tired of not executing on what I knew was there. So going into end of 2020, going into 2021, I just put it all on me. Mm -hmm. And look at you now. (laughs) What have you learned about yourself in the process, Ray, as as you've really invested so much in yourself and you've been the sponge learning as much as you can? um, What what really stands out as what you've really learned about yourself? Abundance. Like when you say like learning about myself, like there's just so like... (sighs) you can reinvent yourself. You can, you can, you can get whatever you want out of this life if you're willing to put in the work. And one of the things where we have those negative, unhelpful thoughts, like, like Tim Grover, uh, famous basketball, uh, coach worked with Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant. And he would ask, he has a book of, uh, winning and he would ask the players like, what is winning? And they gave all different answers. And I really like Kobe Bryant's answer. Um, RP to him was uh, winning is everything. And that's when I think about private practice, like that's winning, like, because you get is everything, all the, all the uncomfortable emotions you feel, all the, the, the emotions of doubt, the thoughts, like it's everything, but it's also all the war, the the, the triumph, the yes, I did it. Oh, like everything is purposeful. There is no busy work. Like, oh, I'm just doing this just to do it. It's like, no, I'm doing this. Even if it was uh, completing this progress note within an hour, not letting it linger. It's, you know, going on Fiverr, looking up, you know, let me, you know, adjust the logo. Let me come up with a banner. Let me, everything is everything. All the highs, all the lows, but it's worth it. It, I, I learned, I learned that it's worth it to go after it. That's what I learned about myself. Like it's worth it to continue to invest in myself and go after it. Oh, I just, I love your response. And I have another follow-up question for you, Ray, but first let's take a quick break for our sponsor. You'd think paying yourself and your team would be an easy part of running a business, but that's far from true. With ever-changing tax laws, complex calculations, and different types of employees or independent contractors to account for, running payroll can sometimes be a pain in the neck. Luckily, Gusto has worked for the past decade to make sure that entrepreneurs like you can run payroll in minutes with just a few clicks. They'll even help with compliance, new state tax registration, and international contractor payments. But that's just scratching the surface of what Gusto can do for your business. From comprehensive benefits to hiring and onboarding tools and team management features, Gusto's platform is built to help your private practice scale with confidence. It's all part of Gusto's modern HR platform, one place to help build happy, healthy, and productive teams. As a special thank you to our listeners, we're offering Gusto for free for three months at gusto.com slash PPS. That's gusto.com slash PPS. Ray, I love how you're sharing this story. And, and I know, Susan, you touched on the confidence that Ray has and this belief in himself. It's just, you can feel it in the conversation. And we can see you. Um, the, the listeners are just listening to you. We can see you as well, but it's it's almost tangible. You can really mm-hmm. feel that that belief and that strength and that determination that you have and how important it is for you to succeed. And as you say, win in private practice. So what is like the experience of the journey towards winning in private practice? What, what is that like for you as you're moving forward in that direction? Um, just continue to expand. So um, I'm going I'm to keep it real with like the audience, like a big thing because, you know, and you guys touched on it within the, um, within the program where it's a, you constantly are learning, like learning different things where you're learning how to you know, market yourself, learning about social media. Like you're, you're learning all these different things. And 
uh, in my experience, I found that it's like, you may want to go, 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 but there are a lot of like, hold on, stop, learn how to do this, whatever that is at the time, and then proceed up. Oh, now I got to figure out like YouTube. If you're doing YouTube, up, oh, got to figure out Instagram. You're doing Instagram. Up, oh, got to figure out how to do this, how to do that. And it can seem overwhelming and a lot, but it's just worth it though. It's just, mm-hmm. it really is worth it. And just reminding yourself that, you know, you're making progress, right? We're not trying to chase perfectionism. We're trying to, we're not trying to be perfect. We're just trying to make progress and continue to learn and go from there. So um, just, yeah, just as a heads up for the listeners, like hey, you may want to go, 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 but you got to stop and everything's purposeful. Like you got to learn about whatever you're learning about at that moment. Cause there's a reason why you're stopping to learn about it. And I think that's the, the part that trips people up the most is that each new step brings new challenges to learn and I know for myself, I'll be very transparent. That's the stuff that I like, you know, want to, I have all the squirrel moments, the distracting moments, you know, where I'm like, oh, I'd rather like bury my head in the sand than learn this yeah. new task. But when I do it, oh my gosh, it's like so freeing. I feel so good about myself. I want to like scream from the, the rooftop that I did it. So it's in those challenging moments that we're really feeling the most success. And it sounds like that you are, you embrace those moments rather than run away from it. Mm-hmm. And, and I, it definitely uh, got better over time where like, you'll just be put in these situations where like you were saying, Susan, to your point, like, uh, oh, I have to learn about this. And it's like, what is this? This is an odd feeling coming up. Like, why <laughs> does it feel like I'm in molasses now? Like, why is it hard to engage <laughs> yes. in the and the tasks, but these other tasks, I'm just kind of flying through them. And then just, just, you know, using positive self-talk, just kind of saying like, it's okay. And just kind of engaging in it, doing it. And then again, to your point, Susan, like after a while, you're just like, ah, it feels so good. I'm done. And it's not as, it's not as heavy anymore. And I think also, you know, having a team in place, whether it's, you know, you know, uh, live people in your corner, you know, mentors, coaches, or having a course like the marketing e-course, whatever it is, it's it's knowing that you don't have to have all the answers, that you can have your team in place, you can have programs that are out there for you that are going to help support you on your journey. And why not embrace it? No, absolutely. That that and and again, shout out to you, Susan, where the coaching, it gives you that, you know, reassurance that you're on the right path and um there were a couple of things that I asked you about where even like a virtual address, because again, I'm all telehealth and I was unsure about the virtual address and how to proceed. And that's the benefit of getting coaching and people that are knowledgeable where they can say like, Hey, you might want to look into this or check this out. Cause it'll save you a lot of time and energy from going through that learning process. Cause one thing I find that's tough for me is when you want to, when you want to know the answer to something, but you can't quite structure the, the question to put into Google or YouTube to get the answer that you want. And it's like, ah, but, you know, talking to a coach, they can kind of help you with that. Yeah, I'm glad to hear that. And uh, it sounds like things are going really well for you. So we're just so excited for your journey. Thank you. I appreciate it. Absolutely. It's really been a pleasure having you on today, Ray. And I, I love hearing about your niche and, and what you absolutely love to do with working with um, you said teens and, men, I think on the podcast, you just said men, but I remember in what you had submitted with your podcast waiver and information that you also specialize in teens and mm-hmm. working with black men and teen boys. Mm-hmm. Um, there's such a, such a need for that. And in the therapy industry, there's such uh, fewer men in general. So to have someone who's working with that niche and um, people can really find you because of the marketing that you're doing, and you're so clear on who you serve, how you can help them. And um, I, I just I just love to hear that. And I'm sure our listeners are really enjoying this conversation as well. Ultimately, what do you want our audience to take away from your message today, Ray? Um, ultimately, uh, believe in yourself and don't be afraid to ask for help. Like seek that guidance, that understanding, that insight, because that really helps with those negative, unhelpful thoughts, those thoughts of, uh, imposter syndrome, those, all of it, like it, it helps with all of that, where, you know, when we're unsure about something, having a mentor to really kind of help you the coaching. And even if it's 
you know, locally reaching out to private practices in the area, you'll be surprised how many people just give you the information. I had some people reach out to me to, uh, that I knew in the past or just, you know, like, hey, how do you get this started? That's in the field. Or, hey, what do you think about this? And just give them the answers. Like, okay, that's no problem. So don't be afraid to, if you don't know something, just to kind of reach out. And even on some of the directories, right? Just sending out emails, networking, right? Um, seeing how you could pour value onto them and, you know, really get that networking started. So I think that's a a big takeaway, believing in yourself and not being afraid to ask for help. Beautiful. Well, thank you so much for being here and sharing your story with Startup Nation today. Susan, thanks for co-hosting the episode with me. And it's so great to see the the two of you together and and to hear about the work that that Ray you have done that's so amazing. So congrats to you on your just Yay. passing your year anniversary and officially being yeah. full time in private practice. It's so so awesome, and uh, we look forward to hearing the next steps for you and and where you're going to be headed after this. So if Startup Nation actually wants to reach out to you, where can they find your information, Ray? Um, on my website, mentalandmind.com. M e n t a l i n m i n d dot com. Um, the reps, the website is currently being revamped. So it's going to be more mobile friendly, everything. And on my Instagram, uh, mental and or <laughs> mental and mind. Um, that's where all my information will be, where it's updated. And I actually uh, started three support groups. Um, we did the first support group for men, um, yesterday, last night, it went really well. Again, all the information is on my Instagram page. I have a, a book club, uh, tomorrow, where we go through books, um, everything is, is it's really good. And then on Thursday, I have a provider support group as well for people within the mental health field and everything. That's on Thursdays um, from on the East Coast time, uh, 7 to 8. And that's for all groups. All information is on my IG page. Awesome. Thank you so well, much. Thanks today. for being on today. Uh, thank you guys for having me. I definitely appreciate it. Yeah, it's great to have you. Well, Startup Nation, we hope you enjoyed today's episode and learned a lot from Rishan's story and his journey in private practice. And he's such an inspiration, especially with the mindset blocks and being able to overcome those. We know everybody struggles with those at different points in time. We want to encourage you to subscribe, rate, and review the show. Of course, share with your friends and fellow colleagues who could benefit from this episode. And next week, you'll want to tune in because Katie and I are going to be back talking about marketing your private practice, how to do more with less. We really talk about how to get the most bang for your buck when it comes to marketing strategies. So we will look forward to seeing you then. In the meantime, stay inspired. Thanks for joining us on The Private Practice Startup. Visit theprivatepracticestartup.com for awesome resources, free trainings, attorney-approved private practice paperwork, and so much more. 